This lesson is based upon largely the practice set of Module 4, Lesson 31, where once again we divide decimal dividends by non-unit decimal divisors. Very similar to the previous lesson, however, these problems are not going to be basic division facts, and we're going to move uh, to something that's uh, less time-consuming. Uh, we'll relate this to the what we call the standard algorithm. Okay, let's take a look at this problem here. It, uh, it asks us to estimate this first. So I'm going to take a few steps before I do the estimation. I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction. So I have 53 and 2 tenths divided by 4 tenths. Again, I look at that denominator. It's tenths, so I need to multiply that by 10. And I have 4 tenths divide, uh, times 10 and 53 and 2 tenths times 10. And I'm going to now have 532 divided by 4. I'm going to look for a fact that's divisible by 4. This might not seem intuitive, but I do know that um, 532 is close to 520, which is divisible by 4. 520. Well, let's think about that. 520. Uh, 4 goes into 5 once, and 1 times 4 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. I ask myself now, how many times does 4 go into 12? That would be 3 times, and we're going to need a 0 there because we have uh, 4 going to 0, 0 times. So the answer should be around 130. Now, well, let's look at this fact. We can't easily do this in our head. So we're going to take it and create our problem in Tableau form, where my numerator is my dividend, and my denominator is my divisor. 4 goes into 5 once. 1 times 4 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Bring down our 3. 4 goes into 13. 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12, we subtract, we get a 1, bring down that 2, and 4 goes into 12, 3 times once again, and we are done. Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, quotient here, our quotient is 133, our estimate was 130. You note that we also rounded our dividend down, so our our estimate was actually a little bit lower. Now the other thing I want you to look at here is when I'm multiplying 5 and 3, 53 and 2 tenths times 10 and 3 tenths times 10. Now what's going on with the decimals here? When we got to 532, what happened is, is I shifted that decimal over one place here. I shifted it over one place here. And we're going to move uh, to that model uh, very soon, actually in this lesson. So I wanted to point that out. Let's do another example. Okay, we have another problem here. The, the main difference between this one and the previous one is my divisor is hundredths. Before we write our estimate, let's go on and write, our, uh, write this as a fraction. 9 and 42 hundredths divided by 3 hundredths. Noting that the denominator is in the hundredths, we're going to have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 100. And we have 9 and 42 hundredths times 100. And we get, and again, notice what we're doing with here. We're actually going to 1, 2, 1, 2, right? And we'll get 942 divided by 3. Let's work on our estimate, estimate now. I could just uh, do this simply. I could say 900 divided by 3, and that would be 300. I could get it in a little bit closer. I could say 930 divided by 3, and that is 310. So our answer is going to be something greater than uh, 310. Either estimate's reasonable. Now we'll set this up with our dividend within the tableau and our divisor out. 
3 goes into 9 once. No, 3 goes in, excuse me. 3 goes into 9 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. I subtract to get a 0. Take my 4 down. How many times? Goes in once. 1 times 3 is 3. I subtract, get a 1, bring down the 2, and I have a 4. 314. Either estimate here is reasonable. Uh, the second one is a little closer, but we certainly have a reasonable quotient here, 314. Okay, now we have this thought bubble here, and we're going to kind of relate this. Uh, and, and over time, we're, we're not going to even think about the thought bubble here, but the first thing I'm going to do in this is kind of talk about what I've been doing in the previous one. So I have 306, 3 and 16 hundredths over 4 hundredths. And instead of going through this times 100 times 100, I'm going to just go bang, bang, move that decimal over two places. And now I have 316 divided by 4. We're not asked to estimate here, but I'd say it's around 80 because uh, 320 divided by 4 would be 80. So let's see how we do. Uh, the Using a tableau. Uh, <clears throat> 4 goes into 31. We can't go 8 times, so we'll go 7. 7 times 4 is 28. I subtract, I get a 3. And I bring down that 6, and I have 36. And 4 goes into 36 9 times, and that comes out nice and evenly. 79, and that was pretty close to my estimate of 80. Okay, you've got that procedure down. Uh, now we're going to do a few word problems. And note that I have two sets of word problems here. I've got number four from the practice set, which is an awful lot like number four in the homework, which is one of the more complex homework problems. Let's take a look at this. It says, if volunteers set up a water station, oh, excuse me, the total distance of the race is 18 and 9 tenths miles, kilometers. If volunteers set up a water station every 7 tenths of a kilometer, including one at the finish line, don't let that fool you, that doesn't compl complicate the problem at all. How many stations will they have? We're not going to have one at the starting point, but we will have one at the finish line. Let's do a quick tape diagram. The hole is 18 and 9 tenths. And we are going to see how many 17 tenths there are here. I'm going to, or 7 tenths. I'm just going to do this model. Use the ellipsis. 7 tenths. 1, 2, and a question mark. How many 7 tenths are there? Well, again, we have, we can think of 18 and 9 tenths divided by 7 tenths. And, of course, we know that we can now just simply move one decimal place over. We have to do the same in the numerator and the denominator. So look at the denominator. How many decimal places do we need to move it? If it's tenths, it's one decimal place. If it's hundredths, it's two decimal places. We have to do the same with the uh, numerator. So let's now set up the problem. 189 divided by 7 goes in twice, we get a 14. A little short on space here, we get 49. 7 times 7 is 49. And so we get 27 stations. Okay. And again, this here is 7 tenths, this here is 7 tenths. So we have a station here, and a station here, and a station at every 7 tenths. And the final 7 tenths is going to be right there at the finish line. So we don't need to add anything to that. Okay, now we have another problem. Uh, they want to set up a first aid station every nine tenths. Again, the same modeling here, except uh, these uh, the tape diagram, the hole will still be 18 and 9 tenths. And our parts here, we want to see how many, not 7 tenths, but how many 9 tenths there are. So again, I have the same hole. It's 9 tenths now. Move the decimals over twice. Now we have the problem 189 divided by 9 goes in twice. 
subtract, get a zero, got my nine, and it's 21. So 21 stations, and again, uh, that includes one at the finish line. That doesn't mean we add one, because our, our first aid stations are set up at the end of each one of these seven-tenths or nine-tenths intervals. Let's look at the homework. So we have Lucia is, is making a 21 and 6 tenths centimeter bead and string to hang on the window. She decided to put a green bead every 4 tenths of a centimeter and a purple bead every 6 tenths of a centimeter. How many green beads and how many purple beads does she need? Well, this is very much like this, this uh, 4A and 4B all put together. Our hole is 21 and 6 tenths as opposed to 18 and 9 tenths. Our part will be 4 tenths as opposed to 7 tenths. And for the second part, we have the same hole, 21 and 6 tenths instead of 18 and 9 tenths. And we'll divide that by 6 tenths as opposed to 9 tenths. So I've led you through the uh, whole process using different numbers, but you should be able to relate these two problems and easily get the one from your homework done. Okay, number five from our practice set. In the laboratory, a technician combines a salt solution containing 27 test tubes. Each test tube contains six hundredths of a liter of the solution. So if he divides the total amount of the test tubes into three liters, three tenths of a liter each, how many test tubes will he need? This is interesting. I want you to just look at these numbers here and look at the relationship between them. Okay, so let's let's do that. I, just as a, an aside note here, I have three tenths. I want to know how many six hundredths there are in there. And we're going to move the decimals over twice. Okay, here I need a placeholder. So now I have equals 30 divided by 6 equals 5. So it takes, we have 5 of these to fill one of those. Okay, let's uh, just come back to that later and see how it relates to our solution. So we have 27 test tubes that hold this much. So what do we have? Uh, we have 6 hundredths, 6 hundredths, we don't, uh, we, and 6 hundredths, we don't want to uh, draw every one of those in, so we use our ellipses. So I'm going to number, number them 1, 2, and this will be 27. We don't know the whole. Okay, if we have an equal number of uh, 27 of equal sized portions of 6 hundredths, that means we need to take this and add it 27 times, and of course we don't want to do that. So 27 times 6 hundredths. Remember, we don't line up decimals when we multiply fractions, or decimals, rather. So what do we get? I have 6 times 4 is, 6 times 7 is 42. Regroup my 4. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. And I need to deal with my decimals. I have no decimal places in my first factor. I have two in my second, so I need to put it right there. Two decimal places. So now I know my whole is 1 and 62 hundredths. Now, once I have that, I'm going to have to divide it into equal parts. Now I know the whole. And again, I can bracket it down here. 1 and 62 hundredths. We're going to make portions that are three tenths. Now I know my whole, but I don't know how many of these, so I have one, two, and question mark. So we have one and sixty-two hundredths divided by three tenths. And again we can move our decimals. Remember we just look at the uh, numerator or denominator or divisor so I have uh, to move them one place and I have 16 and 2 tenths divided by 3 and 3 goes into 16 five times I put my decimal lining it up with that of the dividend in my question
quotient. And we multiply, and I get 15, and now I subtract 16 minus 15, I get 12, and I get a 4. So we have 5 and 4 tenths. Okay, we got to do a little thinking here. If I just get 5, I can't get 5 and 4 tenths test tubes. If I have 5 test tubes, I'm going to have 4 tenths left of solution left over. So I want to contain all of this material, so I'm going to have to think about this. I obviously can't use 5, I'll have to use 6 test tubes to contain all this salt solution in 3 tenths of a, mil of a liter container. Now, I, I mentioned this right here, and I have five here. Remember that uh, five of these six hundredths are the same as uh, one of the three tenths. So what's going on here is I can take my five and four tenths, and if I multiply that by five, I should get back to my 27. This is not really part of the problem, but I just want to relate things for you. So I get 20, regroup the 2. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27. I have one decimal place in my first factor, none in my second, indeed. So if I have a container that's 5 times larger, I can expect a quotient to be one-fifth the size of the previous uh, of the uh, amount of containers used in the previous ones, so that works out.